Hello, my name is Kennedy Calhoun, and today I will be presenting on an era in art history best known as the era of Impressionism. This is just a quick bibliography showing where I got my sources for information for this slideshow. Um, I got my sources for talking about integrating standards from a book titled Meeting Standards Through Integrated Curriculum, and then I got my information concerning Impressionism from an article titled Impressionism, Art and Modernity, written by Margaret Samuel. So before we get started, what is Impressionism? A quote that I found helpful in understanding Impressionism is found from the article that I just spoke about, and it says, in 1874, a group of artists called the Anonymous Society of Painters, Sculptors, Printmakers, etc. organized an exhibition in Paris that launched the movement called Impressionism. Its founding members included Claude Monet, Edgar Degas, and Camilla Pissarro, among others. So this group was launched as an anonymous society. So the Impressionism art movement was countercultural to the art that was being produced in that day. This Impressionism movement was revolutionary because it had rejected established forms of art and sought to create art that did not conform to artistic standards of the day. Therefore, this movement opened the door for the modern art movement that has endured until today. The paintings and creations were deemed unfinished by many art critics of the day. So this is a famous painting by one of the founding members of this movement named Claude Monet, and the painting is named Impression Sunrise. As you can see, the lines are blurred. There are soft yet vivid colors used, and there's no distinct lines, which was a trademark of art from this era. Here's another famous piece of artwork from this era, and it was produced by Alfred Sisley. Again, there is a vivid color. It's depicting a leisurely scene in Europe, which is also against what was typically produced by artists in the 1800s. Normally, they would do portraits, they would do landscapes, but this just shows people walking on the sidewalk. So Impressionism became the new way to display modern life through art. So again, often Impressionistic art pieces displayed and illustrated leisurely activities and everyday activities for people in European society at the time. So the artist that I will focus on within this presentation is named Eduardo Monet and this is the painting titled Boating. It was produced in 1874 and the location depicted in the painting is Paris. Um, so the specific revolutionary techniques that are seen in this single painting are that it was inspired by Japanese art. So Monet was not only sourcing his inspiration from the European art around him, but he was reaching out to different corners of the globe to receive inspiration. Um, secondly, there are vibrant colors that were never used before. Typically, paintings had been more subtle, subdued, darker colors, and in the Impressionism era, the paintings were vivid. They were bright, as we see in this painting. Um, and then the subject matter of painting was common for Impressionistic art, which often depicted leisurely activity unlike art of the past. So again, the subject matter of painting during this era was common everyday leisurely activities. Again, unlike the art that had been produced before, which was typically only of landscapes, only portraits of families or people. So integrating Impressionism into the classroom. Um, so I just as an example lesson, I'll take the context of a third grade JCPS classroom. The two standards that I would integrate are found in 
reading and writing standards, so students would be expected to acquire and use accurately grade appropriate conversational, general academic, and domain specific words and phrases, including those that signal spatial and temporal relationships. The art standard that I would integrate into my lesson would be to apply knowledge of available resources, tools, and technologies to investigate personal ideas through the art making process. So the learning target for our lesson in studying Impressionism would be, I can create an impressionistic work of art and write a description of my creation. So I would give this definition of Impressionism, a French art movement from the 1800s that used light, vivid colors to depict modern activities. So the integration of Impressionism into the classroom, to do this, I would integrate these two standards from differing disciplines into the classroom by laying out the learning target, having students create an impressionistic work of art reflecting their life, so reflecting something that happens in their life as modern children, and constructing a written response explaining their artistic creation. The assessment would be the completion of the activity, which was creating a piece of artwork and a written explanation. So some a quote that was helpful from the book Integrating Content was, a coherent curriculum means that for teachers and students, the learning goals, activities, and assessments align with each other. So by putting these two standards together and creating an activity, such as I have, um, represents a coherent curriculum working together to achieve one goal. So this is how I would grade this activity. I have unsatisfactory, needs improvement, satisfactory, and outstanding. So satisfactory would require the students to demonstrate mastery of both of those standards. So they would be using academic, academic terms as required in that language standard and they would be creating an artistic piece as required in that art standard. In conclusion, integrating art and writing is an excellent way to incorporate performance-based assessments into your classroom. Thank you.